Welcome to another edition of The Girls. I'm with my mom, Debbie, and we are still remote here as we wrap up this season. Hi, Mom. Hi, Nina. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I feel like every show since we're home, I either have a Band-Aid on my finger or one of my, one of my nails chips off. So there you go, folks. The real deal at home. You're doing more housework. I get lazier. I swear to God, I give myself a pep talk and I have makeup on today. So that's, that's a good thing. I still have, I still have my sweatpants on, but I do have a nice shirt on for y'all. Well, I'm I'm fully dressed, but I have sandals on because we finally got some nice weather. And once my toes peek out of the boots, I don't go back. It was only 45 degrees the other day and I had my sandals on. It was raining, but I had a big heavy coat on and my sandals, but you know, the toes are out. So again, breaking out of uh, winter into spring, um, you know, I was walking uh, the other day and I was trying to get ideas of what kind of flowers I want in the front, which ones, you know, are going to last through. I'm I'm, I'm usually the early bird, but I've been trying to wait because I know we always get a frost and later in April and then my my flowers will die. So I was thinking of getting some um, uh, daisies and some, is it, I guess, dandelion, not dandelions, those are wheat, right? Um, not dandelions. <laughs> I have enough of those. We just Don't killed worry, those. You'll right. get dandelions without yeah, buying them. Those are free. Um, daffodils, daffodils. So I was going to put some daffodils in the front uh, because I'm trying to see what the deer aren't eating in our area. And if you live uh, in an area like we do, where you can see behind me, I'm at home, like we're, we're in the woods. So the deer, like we planted all these cute little uh, flowers last year around the mailbox and the, the deer when they were like, yes, and the squirrels. And so this year I was thinking, I was trying to walk around and see everyone's flowers in, in the, in the development to see what kind of flowers, you know, I should, I should get. I'm definitely getting ferns. Ferns are one uh, plant that I, I have been able to keep alive um, and they last literally through fall. Um, so I'm definitely getting my ferns. I don't know what kind of flowers you're getting, but all right. Well, but, we have a lot of exciting things coming up. We're, it's a big event that I'm very proud to say is going to be um, hostessing. You were asked to do this, and you could introduce our guests. We're going to talk all about it on today's show. But um, yeah, it's kind of exciting coming up. Yeah, you broke up a little bit there, but I know you said that I'm going to be um, hosting um, the event. I was honored to be asked. It's the Catholic Women's Conference, and it's here in the Diocese of Scranton in Pennsylvania. It is open to everyone, which is great because this year it's going to be um, live streamed as well. So if you don't want to attend the event um, for safety precautions or you live in a different state, you can always attend and get a great message, a spiritual message with merciful love is what we're going to talk about coming up. If you are one that, you know, um, needs some rejuvenation spiritually, which I don't know who doesn't need that. Um, we're going to talk about it. We have guests from the Catholic Women's Conference on our show today. So stay with us on the girls. Thanks for joining us here on the girls all season long. My mom and I really do appreciate all of the feedback, all the comments as we get through the pandemic. Um, these, this is actually our last show via Zoom. So we're excited to get back into the studio. And we're also excited to have uh, several guests on today from the Catholic Women's Conference that's coming up. Um, Mary Carol Donahue, and she is um, with the chair of marketing for the event. And Teresa, or I should say Jill Mertz joins us. Teresa is, is later in the show, but uh, Jill Metz is the artist that we're going to talk to today with trueoriginal.com. So thank you so much for being on the show with us today, girls. Delighted. Delighted. Thanks. Happy to be here. Mary, let's start with you. Let's connect on uh, what the Catholic Women's Conference is. I know this happens in every diocese. This is specifically for hosted by the Diocese of Scranton in Pennsylvania, correct? Well, actually, it started with a group of women called Altus, and that is a group of women in the diocese who plan events, book clubs, and it was their idea to start a conference. And I was the first chair in 2018 and 2019. Um, it's 
the Refresh Your Faith Conference, and that was the theme of the first year. 2019, it was Come to the Well. 2020, it was canceled. But we're back again with Merciful Love this year. Um, and but yes, I mean it's planned for the diocese of Scranton, and we're very we partner with the diocese on this planning. All right, so tell us about it. What's it about? So with great with merciful love this year, we have um, Teresa Bonapartis, who you're presenting a little bit later. She had um, she aborted a child, and it absolutely devastated her. But divine, her story of divine mercy and how it has changed her life is so awe-inspiring that um, I know it'll warm every woman's heart who comes. Sister Virginia Joy, if anyone's heard the nuns of Sisters of Life, they are full of life, and they, uh, Sister Virginia Joy will be coming. And then Father Chris Salar is a Marian father from Stockbridge, Massachusetts, um, the Divine Mercy headquarters. And he, uh, many people know him. He, he's a very popular speaker. And he will be coming and speaking too about merciful love. Merciful love. And the music is Taylor Tripodi, who's, I'll say her voice is heavenly. So the women will enjoy having her. What can someone expect that has never attended the women's conference before? What can they expect if they do sign up and they do come, you know, to the conference? What is the day's activities like for them? So the day's activities start with mass. Then there'll be the featured speaker. We will say the rosary. We will also this time be doing the Divine Mercy Chaplet. After lunch, there'll be another speaker, um, Eucharistic Adoration. So there are three featured speakers um, talking. And then, of course, mass Eucharistic adoration. But I'll tell you, I love the women who think, oh, conference, I don't want to go. And they come with ever, whatever little guardian angel nudged them to decide to come. And those are the women you love the best because, oh, they're just the day it moves the veil between heaven and earth. And they really get a taste of the divine presence in their lives. It's, it's really a very, very special day of uniting yourself with heaven. And, and, and you, you mentioned um, also this year because of COVID, it will be held in a tent. Is it outdoors? It's going to be at Marywood University. So outside in a tent, we'll still social distance, CDC guidelines. I think whatever they say, we'll still mask. Um, we give favor bags and there's a pink mask in it for all the ladies. <laughs> We'll plan on covering, um, but yeah, oh, but we couldn't imagine not coming again together. We have to pray together again. And and it'll be beautiful, beautiful. There are a lot of different um, stories, some great stories that come out of these conferences. Something magical happens at these conferences. And Jill Metz, you have a, a great connection to how you got involved with the Catholic Women's Conference. Can I introduce her? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill, you can correct the story, but I think um, what's so unique is when they asked me to chair it, I said, oh my gosh, I need a saint who, in heaven who's not busy. And long story short, St. V- Rose Venerini was the assigned saint. And backpedaling a little bit, I went to a conference trying to learn how to run this one. And I went and some artist designed a painting of Mother Mary and Jesus. And when I say it was awful, it was awful. Note to self, no paintings. Oh, no artist is going to call me and paint a painting. Fast forward, let me introduce you to Jill Metz because St. Rose Venerini stalked both of us. (laughs) And she became our patron saint of the conference. Yes. And, and what a saint she is. Um, and, and I just want to give a shout out to the women of Scranton. What a beautiful, beautiful community of women that gather at that event. Um, it's such an honor to be able to connect with women as women and exactly who we are in the space that we are and, and you know, the season that we are. And I think that um, these women in Scranton that I experienced do it with just such great love and zeal. So I do want to say hi to all of the women in Scranton. Um, And also to you ladies, thanks for having us. 
Yes, St. Rose. I was revisiting her the last few weeks, and I I will say she is really a saint for our time. Um, You know, it's no mystery to me that the Lord would lead you to St. Rose and myself to St. Rose, because I think she's a saint for all of us. Um, When Mary Carol and I connected, you know, we really just immediately had this um, Holy Spirit love for one another. Um, and that really did transpire, trans, transfer into my time um, at the Scranton Women's Conference. Um, so Mary Carol contacted me and we started talking and sharing a little bit about um, who we were. And she asked me if I would be willing to paint the saint. And I said, Mary Carol, I'm too busy to paint a saint. (laughs) So the saint that she prayed for that wasn't too busy that said, yes, sent her to an artist that was too busy and said no to actually painting the saint. But I did agree to design a um, holy card for the event and and a graphic design. And really all of us, including the, um, the, uh, conference chair committee were not in love with the work that I did. Um, so just, I, I like to call St. Um, Rose, the patron saint of busy people and of stubborn people, because through that, through the, you know, discourse with the Holy card, we ended up, and I ended up saying yes to painting the, the saint. And I do want to, of course I had to grab a picture of her. She's here. here she is. <laughs> I carry mine everywhere. And so um, she, she, yeah, she <laughs> um, revealed herself to both Mary Carol and I through this work that we did together. And, yeah, and this is neat. The bells, she would send girls out into the street calling women to pray in venerating Italy. So how beautiful. We give every woman a bell to hang around their neck. So the bells will ring all day calling us to prayer. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. And as I've been, again, praying with her this last few weeks, I started thinking about that exact thing about the bells and how that was a call to prayer for these women that uh, are really young people that, you know, were so ignorant of the faith, um, just didn't know what they didn't know. And I thought about how, as women now, we respond to the call to prayer. Um, Some of us have it in our, you know, phone to, you know, our beeper goes off at three o'clock and we know that that's the time of divine mercy or the Angelus at noon. Um, And I just thought that's such a great witness for all of us, those bells and, you know, responding to the bells in our own life and that call to prayer, you know, continuously. So that was something that really touched me the last few days as I um, revisited my my love of St. Rose. All right, well, stay tuned. You could take a look at all the information that's up on your screen. And when we come back, we'll have more about the Women's Conference. Welcome back to the girls. We are so excited this uh, show to have all of these wonderful women who are here to invite you to the Women's Conference. Uh, Catholic Conference this year, and we're giving you a peek into it. And with us today, we have one of the featured speakers, Teresa Bonaparte. And Teresa, give us just a little tease as to what you're going to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Hi, I'm really grateful to be here. And I'm speaking about my favorite topic, the mercy of God. And it'll be a personal um invitation to really look at his mercy in our lives, but I'll be sharing how his mercy touched my life um, in a healing experience that I had. And I think it's just just such a beautiful and such a crucial thing, the attribute of his mercy. And I work in a post-abortion ministry and um, we've been doing it. This is actually our 25th year. And I've just been so privileged to see his mercy working in the lives of so many people over these years, people that have come so broken and desperate and despairing 
and really have experiences of the mercy of God. He is mercy, right? I mean, for me, that's his name, mercy. And just really have that experience of the mercy of God and to just watch their whole lives being transformed by it coming in being totally broken and depressed and despondent and just seeing as his mercy touches them more and more and more them just coming alive and having joy in his life again um but i always do say the biggest miracle of his mercy is myself because i've had that experience myself and i'll be sharing um my experience in healing um, from abortion and the way that his mercy touched my life in so many different ways and not just my life but one of the things we really don't look at too much is um you know the rippling effect of abortion and how many people it does affect because it's not just the woman although there's many women out there suffering in silence and i'm praying still now you know i started already i've been praying for a while for this conference that women that might be sitting out there or watching it um would really be able to hear what i'm saying and maybe if they're suffering in silence because there's so many women that never tell anybody about their abortion and it's not just abortion it's any sin right but specifically i'll be speaking about abortion and um that his mercy will touch them so that they'll come forward to healing because it really does affect so many women and relationships people that are married and their spouse doesn't know that they've had an abortion and so it affects the the relationship there or children or grandparents so it's really um a talk that i'm praying you know his mercy will be truly manifested through it and will bring people forward for healing for themselves no matter what the sin is or no matter or what they're struggling with to really just i mean i always say you know his mercy in his mercy he shows us his misery but then we see more mercy he gives us more mercy so it's just like a a cycle that just keeps going the more we see our miseries whatever they may be whatever sins whatever we have um the more mercy that we get and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper until we're really sharing in his life which is just such a beautiful thing and what a year, what a great time um, to be involved with this women's conference with what a year of isolation, depression, the unknown, yes. people who are scared, scared people who are feel abandonment, um, especially unsure of their futures, unsure of the future. Are they safe? Are they healthy? It's just such a time to really turn to our faith and, and turn to to God, as you said, with merciful love. And I'm really excited to hear your story and I'm getting goosebumps just listening to it. And hopefully being able to share your story will help others heal with what they're, what's going on in their lives, whether it is through abortion or some kind of depression or despair that they've gone through in the last you know, year of this pandemic. Um, anyone you talk to, I feel has some kind of mental um you know, depression um, or something that they've had a breakthrough because of uh, the pandemic. So I'm really, Teresa, excited to hear your story and just share some positive energy with, you know, spiritually with the rest of the audience that's going to be there. And I know, Anne, you have a compelling story of experience you had with this conference. And that's really why uh, Mary Carol was instrumental with bringing you on to the show. So if you can share with us, you know, um, basically your message, your, your message and your experience through the conference. The, when I attended the first conference in 2018, um, I was at a point in life where I was just running the race. I had a two year old, I was commuting an hour every morning and evening to work, trying to get dinner on the table, do groceries, take care of a house, uh, you know, and, and I had put my faith on the back burner. And I had always been, I went to Catholic school, you know, been faithful going to mass, but I did feel, and I looked back in my journals that I was really stunted. I did not feel myself growing spiritually. And I felt myself very hungry, thirsty, <laughs> parched. And uh, here comes this Catholic women's conference saying, refresh your faith. And I thought that's, that's just what I need. <laughs> uh, and um, I had been invited to go on three, four day weekend retreats. And I thought, I can't do that. But here comes a conference that is just a few hours. I can leave the baby with dad and grandpa and me and mom are going to go to this conference together with my best friend. We made a day of it and just decided 
Um, we need this as women. We need this. I need this so badly. And I didn't even know what that day was going to be, but I just felt called and I needed to say yes to this. So there I was, you know, just um, experiencing the beauty of the day. Um, the committee then had done such a great job at making everyone feel welcome and, um, and just allowing the spirit to move and speak. And so by the end of the day, when we came to the time of adoration and meditation, there was beautiful music from a group, uh, his own, and a reflection by Father McAleer. And during that time, I just found myself on my knees, so open um, because I had been given the space to allow God to, um, to enter my heart that I had been able to walk away and put other things on hold for the day. And just the conference gave me the space to allow God to, to, to work within my heart. And so during that meditation, I, I remember the priest saying, um, you know, you imagine yourself face to face with Jesus. And he says the one thing you need to hear. And for me, very clearly, <laughs> Uh, with my eyes closed, knees on the ground, I saw Jesus with his arms outstretched as if he was inviting me, uh, calling me to, to him, um, ready to embrace me. But then the scene switched to an image of St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome with the colonnades on either side, like arms outstretched like the mother church. It went back to the, the, you know, the image of Jesus and I heard the words, come home. And I felt that to be an invitation back to rediscover my Catholic faith, to bring it off the back burner and to dive in and discover the richness. I mean, here I was 44 years old, practicing Catholic, proud Catholic my whole life. And I, I just felt that um, there was a, a, like an ocean waiting for me to dive into. It's just how I felt. And um, one of the other speakers that day, um, had, had had referenced a 33-day consecration to Jesus through Mary. And the women in the room were nodding their heads and saying, mm-hmm. And I'm looking around going, I never heard of this. I'm Catholic and my whole life, and I, like, there's so much I don't know. And that's really what kind of opened my eyes to, 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 to just go and be obedient and follow this voice. And so I got that book. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have necessarily this big drive to, you know, learn more about Mary or uh, grow in a devotion to Mary or, or, or anything. It was just out of sheer obedience. I'm going to get this book and I'm going to do these 33 days. And I was scared and I was doubtful, but I made it through and I made the consecration, not knowing what that would mean, but it allowed me to invite Mary to have a greater presence in my life. And I and people say it, and now I feel it. Mary leads us to her son, and her son leads us to the Father, and the Father is is that ocean of love and mercy. And I believe that it was His mercy working in my life to bring me back. Um, and now here I am on a committee to bring, uh, <laughs> you know, merciful love uh, to more women to ha encounter Christ in a way um, that they may never expect, but to. Uh, invite them to say yes, to open their hearts, to go into that space, because we're providing that for you, where Jesus can work and God can speak, and you can find a path, because I didn't have that path before. But three years later, um, I'm still on this journey, and I'm certainly not perfect at it. I fail, uh, but I can be a little more um, graceful with myself and realize that I have a path. I don't have to fall into despair of my own weakness and sins. But then I know uh, God is walking that, Jesus is walking that road with me. And it's through his mercy that I can take another step and get closer to, to um, who he wants me to be as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, as a, a coworker, as a friend. So um, I, I encourage anyone who's even thinking about it or heard about it, even if you don't know anything about it, um, to just, just give yourself that gift and allow yourself a day, a day to let God fill that, fill that hunger that you may have, whatever that is. Um, we look forward so much to uh, coming to the conference and experiencing hopefully half of the things that m the people who have shared with us today. Janine, you're going to have a special role in it as well when we're at the conference. Yes, I'm, I'm honored. I'm actually speechless over it. So Mary Carol uh, sent me a message uh, recently asking me to um, host the event. 
And it came at a great time and not to get into it, I will probably share my story uh, during the conference, but it came at just a really good time um, in my life uh, for the calling. So Mary, I I really appreciate you asking me to be a a very small part of this amazing conference that um, any it's open to anyone. I love that it's going to be streaming because if you still want to be a part of it and you live a little distance away, you can still purchase your tickets and you can You can watch from the comfort of your own home or you can obviously join us under uh, the tent at Marywood. The link is on the screen if you would like to go and get all of the information. And Anne and Teresa um, and and Jill and, and of course, Mary, thank you for joining us here on the on the girls.